What's going on guys? This is Mark with Anastasio Kali once again, bringing you guys another solo training that you guys can do at home if you're stuck at home right now and you can't train at your local gym. I just want to give a quick shout out to number one, my boys, Coach Miguel and Coach Justin. They run Valdez Strength and Performance. They're absolutely killing the game with online workouts and things you guys can do during this quarantine. So they're actually the head strength and conditioning coaches here at my academy, Union Martial Arts. Definitely check them out if you guys are interested in training. Aside from martial arts, you know, it's very important to keep our physical stature up. So links will be below. You can give them a follow on Instagram and join along with all the workouts and see if they can help you guys out with your next fitness goal. And also the next shout out I want to give is just honestly to everyone out there who has been supporting Anastasio Kali. Thank you guys so much for joining and, and honestly becoming a part of our family. I'm very, very excited for all the future things that are gonna come and the more things that I can bring to the martial arts community. I think we're really starting to pick up momentum and really take those strides in uh, Filipino martial arts that I've been dreaming about. So thank you guys. And if you guys do belong to an academy other than Anastasio Kali or my students, Union Martial Arts, make sure you guys continue to support your academy if you can. I know things are, are tough right now, but honestly guys, you, the memberships and the things that you guys can do to provide that, that little boost for gym owners and, and personal trainers and people that, that work off of client-based services. Local business is one of the things that I like to support the most. So make sure that if you guys can just continue to support them, you know, that, that gym is more than just four walls and a roof. It's a safe haven for a lot of people. It's your training grounds. It's your, it's your home away from home. So make sure you guys continue to do your part as a community. And once again, thank you guys for watching all my YouTube channel videos, as well as, again, all our new members to Anastasio Kali. Now, today what I wanted to show was a kind of a, a series of movements that you guys can train in single stick. And these are gonna kind of work off of the basis of footwork. And footwork in Filipino martial arts is kind of an iffy subject. There, there's diehards for footwork, and then there's people who are heavily against it. And I'm kind of in the middle of it. And hear me out before I, I go on this technique venture with you guys. Footwork, you know, especially in Filipino martial arts, you can often hear the term triangular footwork and different sets that you can train uh, to, you know, that are kind of authentic, if you will, to Filipino martial arts. With that being said, honestly, the footwork that you find in Filipino martial arts, you can find it anywhere else. And that is the, probably the only thing that keeps me in the realm of footwork. Um, don't get me wrong, it's important, but you can't stress it so much that you kind of worry more about how it looks and how pretty it is versus the application or, or the concept of the footwork. Because ultimately, it doesn't matter if you're a 45 degree footwork or you're a 42.5 degree or you're a 37, if you get to that position where you can act and you can counter, you can defend yourself and you don't get hurt, then it's right to me. Right, so like, there's no way that in a practical situation, whether it's sparring or self-defense, that somebody's gonna take a, a magnifying glass or a protractor and measure your angle of your footwork and say, that's wrong. Because at the end of the day, a lot of people that spar in multiple martial arts, at the end of the day, it's hit or don't get hit. And I would prefer not to get hit, so whatever footwork I need to use to get there, I'm gonna use. And if I could piece that in with my actual techniques, even better. But the more pressure that's placed on, you know, not getting hit and using your techniques, your, especially if you're stick sparring, you're not gonna pay attention so much to your footwork as opposed to your blocks and being able to check that stick or strike their hand, strike their head, because that's the primary goal, right? You have to remember that this isn't a dance off. This is a, this is a, a, a match of martial arts. This is a spar combative match. And the more than likely goal of combative matches is to win via knockout, points or submission, not how good you look and not how uh, fancy your, your techniques work. Because at the end of the day, if it doesn't work, it's not really gonna matter, right? So uh, that's just my little spiel. I hope you guys can relate to that. And comment below if you guys have any questions about full work. I'm only gonna use one set in two different versions, which is our 45 degree set or our triangle uh, open set. So we often refer to this as the female triangle or the male triangle. And the way you can do the male triangle will change it up a little bit. So the female triangle, basically without anything combined to it, it's a V pattern where my right foot goes 45 to the right side or my left foot goes 45 to the left side. 
And I generally have one like relatively close to what we call the home or the, or the center point or the starting point here. Okay, and the concept of that, which is the more important part, is to go offline. So if I'm standing on this line right now, squared up with my opponent, anything that goes forward is considered the line of force. And if I stand in it, I'm gonna get hit with the force. So I decide to step offline, and rather than just stepping horizontal to avoid it, I'm gonna step offline so that I can start to go in a counter-offensive motion so where I can enter on an intercepting line on that off angle. So I'm not just fighting forward, because fighting forward is, especially with weapons, it's, it's a 50-50 it's a win, and, win and loss type of ratio. So I'd rather move a little bit more intelligently and kind of cut you off with those angles if I can. So we're gonna be using that footwork and we're also gonna be attaching that with an umbrella block. An umbrella block can go two ways. It can go over my head to the right side. So that's my right hand going to the right side here. The stick is pointing down to my left. Or I can bring it to the left side where it's the opposite. Okay, so the most important part with the umbrella block is one of the most basic things you learn in Kali. But you wanna make sure that obviously number one, this is high over your head because if this is any lower and you're getting bombarded with vertical strikes, your head's gonna get hit. The second thing that we try to focus on is that we wanna make sure that it's diagonal and pointing away from our body. So we often refer to the umbrella block because we treat the strikes like rain. And if this was an umbrella over my head, I want the rain to drip out away from me and not avoiding my head, but then hitting my shoulder. Cause then I'm still gonna get wet or I'm still gonna get hit. So I wanna make sure it's high over my head and I have a strong diagonal angle here. And that would be the same on this side here. Okay, so when we do this footwork, we're trying to merge it with the block. So when incoming strike is approaching us, we step to the offline as we block, okay? So we wanna make sure that we meet that strike accordingly, but we don't wanna just walk towards it with the umbrella block because any intelligent person who's trying to strike you is going to alter their strike if they see that you're already blocking their head. It's like, if I see someone put their shield up, I'm not just gonna keep banging at the shield I'm gonna look at something else that I can strike or maybe change the angle to go away from with the obvious defenses. So we're trying to time that together, right? You can do it on both sides just like this. I'll give you guys another angle. You can do it both sides like this in kind of a flowing state, okay? And you can also do it in combination. So if this is my starting point here, I can go right side to left side to right side. And I'm kind of zigzagging my way through. So I have my right side to my left side to my right side. And eventually that technique itself can be transferred into other principles that we train in Anastasio Kali, which is my strike is my block, my block is my strike. Pretty much what that's gonna look like, if I use this motion and I merge it with my footwork, I don't have to use the umbrella block as an actual block. I can take this angle and I can use the slash and slash and slash, so I'm almost doing like a reverse X or an uppercut type of strike. And that's where the motion kind of gets dual trained. But first and foremost, we use the umbrella block with the 45 degree female triangle. Okay, so that's kind of a generic application. That's what we call like the medium to long range, where you get most of the strikes from the stick on the long range portion. We also have the close range portion, which in, in our system, we commonly refer to as the puño side or the hooking side here. So usually when you use that umbrella block, you get a little closer because we're going counter offensive, right? We're not just going to the side, we're taking a little bit more step forward. So sometimes my umbrella block isn't gonna be this flat. So if you look at my umbrella block right now, right? It's kind of going horizontal. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna compress my footwork and compress my umbrella block. So originally I was going a little bit more further out here to give some space for my stick to work after. This time I'm gonna squeeze in a little bit tighter. My umbrella block is going to be puño focused, which means that when I block, it's not going to be in line with the stabbing point of my stick. It's actually going to turn a little bit just like this. And the reason why I do that is I'm trying to intercept in and I'm gonna follow up with a hooking strike here. So just imagine I'm kind of medium to close range now. I umbrella block my way in. This is my checking hand. Normally I like to grab the hand, clear the hand, or maybe soon dog, that's an eye jab if I'm close enough. And then I like to clear the path and follow up 
with that close range strike. It's a nice short snap, tons of pain, and it can lead to plenty other grappling techniques. We can also do that on the other side. So if I go compress to the left side here, I can check with my left hand, fire back on the forehand side with the puño strike, okay? Oftentimes, there's a technique that you can see. I, I did it on my last video with the bag work, but basically I can use that umbrella block or kind of like an abanico setup, use that to flip over to the other side, and then from here, have all those different attacks from the left side and what we consider the backhand side, okay? So I know I'm throwing a lot of terminology out there. There's a lot of structure in Anastasio Kali, which uh, is kind of the blueprint to setting people on the right path of training Filipino martial arts, at least in my opinion. Uh, I'm gonna leave you guys with one more, and obviously it's a little tricky when you don't have an actual opponent, because these principles and these techniques have to be filtered or fine-tuned to meet that specific situation. But that's why we have that guideline, so that we can have something to refer to and then start to tweak it based off of where we are. So the last one is what we call the male triangle. So before we were doing the V pattern footwork, then we're gonna flip that V to an arrow, okay? So there's two ways we can do this. I'm gonna show you the, what we call the method A. So I'm standing at the peak of the arrow, and then my opposite leg is gonna go down to the opposite side, and I'm gonna pivot and twist my body. Okay, so I can go to my right side with my left foot, or I can go to my left side with my right foot. And generally when we do that, we often use that leading hand on this side to parry. When we go to the other side, sometimes we like to stick parry or sword parry, but you can also use your empty hand. And that's the way I wanna show you guys right now. So, we're standing in that line of force once again, this time, they're getting a little bit closer to where I can create hand-to-hand -hand contact, whether it's a punch, whether it's a, they're coming in for a close range strike with a stick, or maybe I'm just late on timing. So if I step to my left side with my right foot, I'm gonna envision I'm parrying that strike as I'm going offline, okay? Now, because my body is a little bit more turned, I don't wanna turn all the way where I can't see, right, where my back is facing you guys right now, I wanna be on kind of this 45 angle. But from here, what I wanna do is I wanna take this leg that currently is pivoted, I wanna step back, and I wanna load up a strike. From here, I like to do an angle one, and pretty much that's just stepping offline and then crashing them with a the strike. So again, if I'm on this side, I parry, and I strike, okay? If I go to the other side, again, I can use a stick and then follow up with other strikes but I like to keep things together just to give it a little bit more of sets or pairs when I train. So when I go to my right side, I'm gonna take my left hand and I'm gonna pair it to the outside here. So this would be technically on the right side of an opponent. This would cause me to go to the left side of an opponent. Okay, I know it's a little bit hard to visualize, stay with me. But once I go to that outside here, basically I'm pulling the outside of the arm and I'm trying to get this kind of motion. And once I get them offline here, I can follow up again with an angle one. Okay, my placement is just a little bit different. Rather than having my left foot closest to my opponent, now my right foot is closest to my opponent. So another angle, just to give you guys a little bit more of an illustration. Let's say this is the line of force. It's coming in this way. I'm gonna take my left foot and I'm gonna leave it where it is. And I'm gonna take my right foot and I'm gonna step offline here. So this is the line of force. I'm trying to avoid it. So as I do that, I take my left hand because it's my leading hand right now. I parry, I pivot, and I angle one, okay? If I go to the other side, I'm going to step with my left foot by keeping my right foot here. I'm gonna be parrying this way, okay? So this stick's coming in here. I'm gonna parry out to the side. And as I end up on the outside, on the left side of my opponent, again, I pivot, I follow with another angle one. So normally what we do is we kind of bypass a strike with the male triangle, at least in that particular footwork. And then with the female triangle or the V pattern, we try to intercept. We go towards them on the off angle. In the male triangle, they come towards us on the off angle. Okay, so that's kind of the, the, the few ways I would say that I would explain the footwork concepts. And more importantly, again guys, it's not how it looks, it's how it's done and how it's used. And you guys will most likely figure that out as you continue training 
as you start to compile more techniques. And honestly, when you guys apply it, if you guys spar, doesn't matter what kind of format of sparring you use, it will become evident that your footwork isn't going to be too, uh, too, too important. It is there, it is a base, it is a fundamental, but it's not the be all and end all. Okay, so I got one more just to uh, add a little bit of bonus to this video. This is what we call kind of a largo footwork, and this one's a little bit more off the table or, or off the, the paper of, of structure or curriculum. But normally I spar on a right knee because I'm right-handed. That allows my stick to be a little bit, bit more further or closer to my opponent in that case. So a lot of the times what I'll do is I'll bait people to come towards me. So I'll use kind of a largo or a long-range strike. Basically, I use a horizontal strike and I drop it down. So I give kind of an off angle because to me, if I use the basics here, especially depending on who my training partner is, they're gonna find, figure it out pretty quickly. So I just wanna kind of shortcut and I call this a dropping strike, okay? So if I'm facing you, it looks like this. It starts horizontal, then it curves down, straight down to the ground here, okay? As sharp as you need to, but I like a little bit more with tick or circular motion there. But basically when I do that, if I don't hit them here, I leave my stick in that starting point and I'm gonna take a step back. So when I take a step back, I'm not gonna step straight back where my legs become too narrow because if my legs become too narrow, it's like I'm standing on a tight rope and I'm probably gonna fall over. It's very hard to balance. So actually what I'm doing when I step back is I'm stepping almost wider and I'm putting all this weight by driving my right hip into my left hip. Okay, so as I do that, as I step back, I get to follow up with what we call an angle five. So this is a forehand reverse slash. Because all my weight is on this left leg, I can drive this way as hard as I want to because that's where my, my base is right now. So when I'm in this direction, I follow up with this long range strike. And then from here, I have all this weight where I can shoot forward once again and kind of play this rocking game. Or I can step back and transfer that weight in that same kind of format. So that's one of my favorites when I spar. It covers a lot of space, doesn't allow people to get too close from you, or to you rather, and then from there, you start playing your own game, or depending on what fits to your opponent. So that's the, uh, the solo full work drills that you guys can practice at home. Remember, if you guys want more than just the YouTube videos, Anastasia Kali is killing it right now with our online access. We have two tiers. Basic access, which gives you two lessons. Premium access, which gives you four lessons. And also access to three months worth that are archived. So all the lessons three months prior, you could watch that, review that, practice it again on your own time. And uh, there's more to come, guys. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give this uh, uh, video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel. Comment below if you guys want to see anything particular, especially when it comes to solo training, because I know a lot of us are stuck at home. And until then, Catch you guys then.